All right, hey YouTube, uh, one very ordinary man here again. Last time I did a video on the bandsaw mill out yonder and uh, cut up a couple logs with it using a smaller size blade. Uh, and the reason why I used that smaller size blade is because in my particular situation, I was having problems getting the tension right, or getting enough tension, I should say, um, on the blade. I was using a inch and a half blade which if you measure down in the gullet it's probably about like uh, one and a quarter inches and by uh, 0 0.042 inches thickness um, so I went from that and went down to a one inch blade that was uh, 0 0.035 inches thick so cross-sectional area went down quite a bit but I was able to put more tension on the blade and actually got very good results with that. Um, two things, one is that the blade just plain takes less horsepower. I've only, I'm only running an 11 horse motor on the mill, so it's very noticeable that it's cutting easier, it's taking less of a kerf, etc. Um, on that smaller blade and so that motor can really handle uh, going through the cut much better than the thicker heavier blade um, just doesn't have the horsepower for it and, and so this is the first time that I tried that thinner blade and and so far I'm really happy plus the fact that it costs um, well I, I looked it up I, I spent uh, $18.75 for that one inch wide blade, whereas I would have normally spent about $27 for the uh, inch and a half blade. So right there, I saved a little bit of money, got better result, I'm, I'm happy. Uh, by the way, I, I buy my blades at a place called Spectrum Supply, and they've got a few different options. I don't, I, I hate going to places like Woodmeyer's Miser to buy my blades. So, you know, if, <laughs> I don't know if they're the best blades or not, but they're pretty cheap, I think. I I, I got to think that, uh, you know, under 30 bucks for a, a blade, especially for home use, right, is pretty dirt cheap. So, and here I'm getting a, that one inch blade for under 20 bucks and I don't exactly have the smallest, shortest mill in the world. So if you had a smaller bill, mill, I mean, you'd, you know, it's going to be even less. So um, that's not a plug for anybody. It's just saying that's where I get it. A place called Spectrum Supply. Okay. Um, so what I want to do here in this video is show how I measured the tension on my blade. Um, first, I'm just going to do the really quick and dirty one and then I actually want to make a uh, a little better tension meter and modify this <laughs> this thing that I've got going here but let me just do it the quick and dirty way really and then we'll talk about some numbers and uh, and go over those go over the calculations for for blade tension so the way I did it to measure my blade uh, tension is I just I got a cheap one of these things here, okay? Um, calipers, all right? Cheap calipers. <clears throat> and, you know, I've seen people C-clamp with little C-clamps here, put this on the blade. Well, I guess I kind of took it a step further because I, especially with my bigger blade, I knew I wasn't really stretching it out very much. And, you know, if you're, say, put this on at four inches wide and, you know, even at tension, you're only talking thousands. So what's your resolution? I mean, it, you know, you're, you're kind of, uh, the, the error, the potential for error is quite a bit, okay? So what I, what I did is I, I extended that and I just took something like this. I mean, this is just a rectangular piece of aluminum that I happen to have, but you know, 
I mean, whatever, it could be something else, right? Doesn't have to be this thing here. I mean, probably, it could even be a stick of wood. I mean, you know, probably, right? Um, something that <laughs> is not gonna change in length while you're doing the measurement. I mean, you're not really pulling on this thing, so um, it could be whatever. So let's, uh, let's go out on the mill and I'm just gonna show you what I did really quick and dirty and then I'm gonna show you the numbers. All right, so here we go. All right, so you're gonna sit out of my hat right there. <laughs> Good luck, hopefully you don't get sick. All right, so I'm grabbing, whoops, whoa, that was almost a disaster. I'm grabbing this, I'm grabbing that, and I'm grabbing three of these guys right here. And I wish I had smaller ones, but that's what I got, so that's what we're going with. Okay, so here's my blade right here. I'm gonna move this thing back so I get plenty of room. All right. And let me just check my tension on this blade real quick, okay? Set my stuff down here in the dirt. Alright, so my mill right here, there's my tension adjust device, okay, and there's a little threaded rod that goes in here, I don't know if you can see that, but we're going to, this is probably about right, right now, but let me just uh, loosen this, oops, I got to go the other way, okay, I'm gonna loosen it up a little bit. Okay, so I don't know if you can see, up in here this is floppy, okay? All right. So I'm gonna take and bring it up till it's not floppy. Okay, maybe a little bit more. Okay, so that's just, just to the point that it's not floppy, but there's no, there's really no tension on it, okay? It's, it's not tension, all right? So now I'm going to grab this down here and I'm going to grab a, a vice grip. Oops. And I'm just going to take a vice grip this on over here somewhere. Right on the end. Give a little pinch right there. Okay. Not too tight. And, okay, let's grab another vice grip here. So for this one here, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna cheat. Okay, this is, you know, it's still not really exact science, right? But I'll move this over just a little bit toward the end there. Okay, so I'm gonna do like so. And we're just going to clamp this guy. Whoops, I'm going to clamp him on the bottom there so he gets about in the same line as the thing over here. Okay. All right. It's all kind of sitting there, right? Got one more here. I'm going to clamp this guy on here like that. Okay, all right, so basically our distance is from here to there. Let's get us something to measure that with. All right, so I'm gonna measure from here all the way over to there, and that is 26 inches approximately. So now, while I put on my cheaters so I can actually see what I'm doing, I'm going to zero this out 
Okay, I gotta change it here. And I'll hit zero. Oops, that's in millimeters. I don't like that. Okay, we gotta have it in real units, not the stupid millimeter thing. Okay. So we got that zeroed in inches, and I'm gonna tension it up. Alright? So I'm gonna walk back here. And before I had it tensioned, I think it was six, uh, six half turns. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? That's where I had it tensioned when I was running it last. All right, so I come here, and I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's reading 0 0.0120. Okay, so that's 12 thousandths. 12 thousandths over 26 inches. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, 26. So if I was only over, say, 4 inches, you know, it'd be a lot less, and I'd, you know, there's more room for air here, but I'm over a longer distance. So I think... That's kind of an advantage. I mean, if you were going to make up some kind of a jig with this, I would make up a jig that extends this out. Like what I'm doing right here. This is kind of rude and crude, but um, I like this. So I got 12 thousandths tension. So let's go and figure out what that actually means in terms of blade tension. Well, let's first of all make sure we know what this blade is, okay? So I'm going to unclamp this stuff here, with a, hopefully without dropping everything. All right, so I got my cheap little guy here, and I got to re-zero it. So in, down in here, okay. is 0.83 okay then the thickness which I'm going to try and get a thickness here is 0 0.035 thickness is 0 0.035 all right so let's do the calculation okay first of all we know that our blade was 0.83 inches in the gullet, okay, not to the end of the teeth, but just the main fat part of the blade, the actual width uh, was 0.83 by 0 0.035 inches thick. And I needed two lines here, inches. Okay, so we multiply these two numbers together and we get area 0 0.02905 square inches. Pretty simple. The distance that we were measuring over was 26 inches approximately. And the amount that it extended under tension when I cranked my tension thing was 12 thousandths. Okay. So I go here. Now I know that Young's modulus just by looking um, up on Google and from blade manufacturers, etc., is approximately 29 million. Okay, so Young's modulus is really, if you looked at your tensile curves, it's it's how steep that tensile curve is, how, um, uh, what should I say, how uh, how much the force increases relative to the amount of distance that's traveled, and it's pretty much a straight line within kind of a region there. All right, the region that we're going to be working in. All right, so I can calculate. I got my 12 thousandths movement here divided by 26 because I did this over 26 inches. So 12 divided by 26. And you can kind of see if I was only measuring a distance of one inch, that would have been um, what? A, yeah, it wouldn't have been very much would it have if I was measuring over a distance of an of an inch alright so but 12 thousandths divided by 26 times Young's modulus 
29 million means that I had 13,385 psi of tension on that blade. All right, so your extended or extension divided by the distance times Young's modulus equals 13,385 psi. So now just for kicks, I want to measure approximately how much force was on the blade. So I take the PSI, the 13,385 PSI, times my blade area that I got up here from measuring my area here, times blade area is 389 pounds, all right, of tension. Now I'm really not quite finished yet because that's just the one part of the blade, right? <clears throat> or that's the one side of the blade. The blade has a top and a bottom that is under tension, so I multiply that times two, and the tension that I'm putting on is actually seven, approximately, all right, 778 pounds. Okay, so that's kind of very simple nutshell uh, how to if you want to actually measure blade tension on your sawmill and especially if you're like me and you have a system that um, you know you were not able to put a lot of tension on uh, you know I measured it over a longer distance like I just showed you out there and come up with this number now when I was doing this before with my thicker blade uh, I was only ending up at about maybe seven uh, 7,000 PSI and 7,000 PSI is just not enough tension to keep that blade uh, taut uh, as it goes through the wood and it would want to rise and fall um, going through you know unless it was absolutely perfectly sharp so big advantages <clears throat> to the smaller blade that I'm finding out for my situation here and this is going to be different for everybody right and it'll be different once I get this thing here done okay this um, I will probably go back to running the heavier blades except for the fact that the smaller blade is cheaper okay so if I save um, you know if I if I save five ten bucks a blade well that's five ten bucks saved and it's also saved in horsepower so the advantage to this this point zero three five is just a blade thickness that doesn't include the uh, difference in kerf and I don't know what the difference in kerf was offhand but before I was running a uh, zero point zero four two inch blade okay versus 0 0.035 inch blade all right so right there you know you're cutting less material um you know what is what is that that's uh some percentage some percentage less right so point 0.042 minus 0 0.035 equals uh, about seven thousandths divided by 0 0.042. So it's about 16, 17 percent less. 16, 17 percent less material that I'm taking out with each cut, and it's probably actually more than that because like I say I'm not uh, accounting for the difference or the uh, the differences in these two blades as far as tooth set goes all right I'm just looking at this purely from this standpoint here and the the set is really probably the real number but regardless regardless okay when horsepower is at a premium it definitely helps me and it helped me uh, the other day doing this to go with this thinner blade alright just that much easier to pull through the material
So that's my story, and that's a quick synopsis of, of calculating blade tension and just kind of a rude and crude way of doing this, and hopefully that helps somebody. Um, please comment, and subscribe, um, like, whatever. Thanks for watching. We'll see you around.